Hello and welcome to the third video in our three video discussion outlining the demand side of the market for loanable funds. On the screen you'll see a couple of links that you can go back and watch the first two videos and I suggest you do that before watching this video because all the information builds on itself. My name is James Tierney and I'll walk you through this. This third video is going to discuss the shifts in the demand curve for loanable funds. We're also going to talk about a little bit of underlying theory as to why the demand curve is shifting. If you to truly understand the model, you really want to understand the why and not just memorize the how. This should look familiar from the first two videos. We're talking about this trade-off for the demand for loanable funds. It really goes back to the decision the firm is making of should I invest in a project or should I not invest in a project? And that's going to depend on the relationship between the interest rate and the expected return on investment. Uh, if they were the same, the firm would be indifferent between investing in the project and not investing in the project. And so in the second video, we talked about keeping the expected return on investment constant and then we changed the interest rate. Uh, by doing that, we were able to draw the demand curve for loanable funds. Now, since we're looking at shifting the demand curve, we're actually going to keep interest rate constant, and we're going to change the expected uh, return on investment to see how this demand curve will shift. Keeping the interest rate constant, the expected return on investment could increase. If that was the case, now the firm is definitely going to invest in the project because their expected ROI is greater than the interest rate. The opposite could happen, where we keep the interest rate constant, but the expected return on investment decreases. Again, later on in this video, we'll talk about ways this could happen. But if this were to happen and the expected ROI would be less than the interest rate, the firms now would not invest in the project. So what we saw before was that we had a negative relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of loanable funds in the market. This was shown by as we decreased the interest rate, we saw that more firms would jump in and do new projects, therefore taking out loans, and therefore we would see more quantity of loanable funds demanded in our market. But what we're doing here is we're keeping the interest rates fixed. But yet, there's a possibility that keeping them fixed, we see the quantity of loanable funds increasing. I'm going to show you that again. We're keeping the interest rates fixed, but now we're just seeing more loans. The way that would happen is if for some reason the expected return on investment increased at all levels of the interest rate. And that's a key point here, is that a change in the expected return on investment of projects is going to result in a shift of the demand curve for loanable funds. The example I gave here would be the expected return on investment increasing, which would increase the overall demand for loanable funds at all levels of interest because we're keeping the interest rates constant. But it could be the opposite as well. We could see the expected rate of, uh, in rate of investment decrease. And if we saw that expected rate of investment decrease, we would see the demand curve shift to the left. So let's go ahead and look at what could change the expected ROI for a firm. The way you should understand this is think of it as anything that changes the overall expected profit of this project that's being decided on. Remember that the micro foundation of this model is there are firms that are making a decision of whether or not they should invest in a new project. And whenever we make a decision in economics, we're weighing costs and benefits. And the cost of this new project is the interest that I'm going to have to pay to take out a loan to do so. My benefit is going to be the return on investment that I'm going to expect to get from this project. So the easy one to think of is if the government were to come in and just tax or even decrease the taxes on business profits because that's going to directly change the expected profit of this project. For example, if I know that the taxes on business profits are going to go up, that means that the return on investment that I was expecting is going to go down and we'd see a leftward shift of the demand curve for loanable funds. If the productivity of capital or labor 
ends up changing, that's going to change the overall expected profit of my project. We can think of that as technology or education. If we have increases in technology or we have more or less education, uh, that's going to change the productivity of my inputs of this project and therefore that's going to change my expected uh, return on investment. Something that could affect technology or education a little more indirectly would be policies that would incentivize more or less technology or education. You could think of tax breaks uh, on research and development. You could see subsidi subsidization of higher education, things like that. And the last thing is just unexplained changes in human behavior. We can just see firms deciding, you know what, I think the economy is going to go south or uh, I'm ready to pull back on investment. And these are kind of unexplained uh, changes in human behavior. And Keynes uh, called this uh, animal spirit. So you might th see that word thrown around when we talk about changes uh, in the overall expected profit, our future expected profit of any project that we're deciding whether or not we're going to take on as a firm.